Coming up on this edition of the Desert Vision, the Sergeant Major of the Army makes his rounds throughout Kuwait. We take a look behind the scenes at a few jobs at Camp Arif John. And we ring in the holidays with a concert in the desert. This, this, this is the Desert Vision. Welcome to the Desert Vision, presented by U.S. Army Central. I'm Staff Sergeant Daisy Broker. And I'm Sergeant Von Trey Hansen. All of those stories and more coming up, but first... Soldiers with the 75th Artillery Brigade participated in a joint training exercise with the Air Force to strengthen interoperability. Multiple launch rocket system crew members are responsible for operating and maintaining the high mobility artillery rocket system. My role in this mission is to operate the Mike 142 HIMARS, which is this vehicle right behind me. I am the chief. I provide overall watch of the launcher. To execute this mission, we are loading up onto a C-17. Uh, two launchers will go at a time with a gun truck and a POC vehicle. Soldiers need to be able to load vehicles and weapon systems quickly and efficiently. It's very important for us to rehearse these battle drills so that we can always stay ready at any notice. We are kind of like a quick reaction force, so if we stay trained and stay ready, we're ready at any moment. It's for Joint Forces exercises to strengthen our relationship with the Air Force and other forces. We'll be going into a live fire afterwards to demonstrate our firing capabilities. My favorite part of my job is training the young soldiers the minute details of how to be a good 13 Mike. A 13 Mike is a multiple launch rocket system crew member. The hardest challenge that the soldiers will face during these type of missions is learning and developing how to go through a work rest cycle, working those long hours and getting little sleep, so, but enough to maintain the mission. It sets goals for us to achieve so that we can, we set a time standard and then we, tr we strive to bust that time standard and get faster and faster. The final phase of high Mars training is the live fire exercise that allows soldiers to send projectiles down range. Missions like these allow the Army to continue to be a lethal, capable, and combat-ready force. That force was on display for a couple of distinguished visitors recently. As Army Chief of Staff General James McConville and Sergeant Major of the Army Michael Grinston made a visit to honor soldiers with the 3-2 Air Defense Artillery Battalion at Ali Asalim Air Base in Kuwait. That battalion is a high-tempo force that deploys every other year. McConville and Grinston awarded coins, conducted battlefield promotions, and recognized soldiers for their outstanding achievements while serving overseas. Visits like this provide a great boost to soldiers' morale and highlight the work and sacrifice that those deployed take on. We'll be right back. Man, wash your hands. Christmas came early for the Iraqi Armed Forces as the 1185th Deployment and Distribution Support Battalion helped give a gift to sustain security in the area. Army Sergeant Jermaine Jackson was at the port. Uh, Captain Dion Stalling, 1185th DDSB, and I'm the TNT Terminal Management Team OIC. So our mission here is uh, specific for the TNT. It's to coordinate efficient and safe transportation uh, for equipment and containers to and from this port of Shweba. With our mission here, we're able to rapidly and safely bring on equipment that is needed to and from the port. The importance of getting this equipment to our Iraqi partners, it's a sustainment piece. 
you gotta have your ambulance, you gotta have your transportation. So if anything does go down, we're rapidly able to uh, get those services needed, those medical services, food services, transportation to and from. So it's all about sustaining the fight so we can keep on going, moving forward. Captain Stallings also said he's confident that this equipment will be a force multiplier in helping the Iraqis continue their fight against terrorism in the region. People join the Army for different reasons. Some want to see the world, some want to see the benefits. But then there are the ones that have a true passion for the job. Army Sergeant Sam DeLeon has a story about a soldier that not only has a passion for the Army, but also a passion to teach and mentor younger soldiers. Alpha Battery, 1st of the 14th Field Artillery Regiment, 75th Field Artillery Brigade, was out in the field for training exercise Diamond Tempest, which demonstrates their ability to dynamically deploy troops in response to operations throughout Southwest Asia. For Staff Sergeant Dwayne Chapman, it was an opportunity to show there's more to the mission than just firing rockets. Just get, getting to understand how everyone else works, uh, how they grew up, getting to know people. You build, you build families inside the Army, and that's like my favorite part of it. Sergeant Chapman says, getting to fire rockets is fun, but mentoring his soldiers to move up the ranks and hopefully attain his position is the best part of his job. Uh, it's a really good feeling for me. Uh, this isn't my first set of soldiers. I've, I actually have other soldiers that have progressed to the rank of sergeant. Uh, it's always good like letting back on the range and kind of letting them do it themselves. Specialist Michael Torres is one of Chapman's soldiers. He says Chapman is a good leader, mentor, and teacher, but he doesn't make it easy. He challenges us instead of just giving us the answer, he, he makes us like think about it so we can actually learn what, what we have to do. Sergeant Chapman says he's going to continue doing what he loves, mentoring soldiers and firing rockets. In Kuwait for Task Force Spartan, I'm Sergeant Sam DeLeon. Staff Sergeant Chapman's passion for teaching is helping to build a stronger unit while also setting an example for junior leaders. We will have more from U.S. Army Central right after this. Social distancing is giving the people around you at least six feet of separation. As you visit businesses on base, you should see markers on the ground to remind you of what six feet looks like. There may not always be markers, and there may be times when people forget to social distance. If this happens, please politely remind them about the six-foot rule. And always remember to mind your six. It's okay to say, I'm not okay. Está bien decir que no estás bien. I do care about you. As a person. I do care about you. As a soldier. I do care about you as a civilian. I do care about you as a human. Don't deal with a problem alone. No, you are not bothering me. No, I'm not too busy. I have been there. I have fallen before. I'm here, please. Take my helping hand. Ven, agárrame la mano y coge mi ayuda. I'm here. Please take my helping hand. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Please take my helping hand. I'm here. Please take my helping hand. Welcome back to the Desert Vision, presented by U.S. Army Central. The National Guard is always on standby when they are needed. From wildfires to hurricanes, they are always ready. Especially considering the COVID climate of 2020, members of the Guard were called upon to help battle an invisible enemy. 
This past month, that ready fighting force celebrated its 384th birthday. As we move into 2021, these citizen soldiers continue to be an integral part of the military success at home and abroad. Speaking of success, a soldier from the 335th Signal Command, Theater Provisional, was recently awarded the prestigious General Douglas MacArthur Leadership Award. Chief Warrant Officer 2, Kenya Rice, works as a property book officer for the 335th. Due to her outstanding service, she was recently unknowingly nominated and became one of the 28 recipients awarded in 2020. I think it's motivated me. I think it's opened um, doors and opportunities for me and it's motivated me to push past my initial limits and goals and know that, you know, there's some, there's nothing that you can't accomplish if you put your mind to it. And it's kind of, you talked earlier about um, the pinnacle of my career and winning that award was probably that. Chief Rice was unable to attend the ceremony due to her current role in the Middle East, but says this award felt like a launching point for the rest of her military career. We'll be right back after this. As we close out of 2020, we look back on a year that was certainly not filled with cheer for a lot of us. The COVID environment had its way in forcing isolation all across the world. But as we learned to adapt and live with this virus, things slowly got back to a new normal, allowing us to celebrate the holiday season with a Christmas concert at Camp Air of John Kuwait. A socially distanced crowd surrounded the stage to hear Christmas classics as well as gospels and some country tunes. Concert goers also indulged in holiday snacks and a few raffles. Um, tonight, we know we're all in the same situation. We wish we could be home. I know some are like me, this is my first time away from home for the holidays, so I have my family here, I have family there as well. Right? Right? So this concert provided a great morale boost for those missing home during Christmas. The holiday season can be a difficult time for a deployed service member. Being away from family hits especially hard around Christmas. However, there is usually no shortage of care packages to help a deployed service member feel connected. We have a behind the scenes look at one of the mail rooms on Camp Erfjan. We are the connection between the soldiers here and their families at home. So I feel like right now uh, mail is especially important during the holidays. Uh, because sometimes this is the first time for a soldier to be away from home and uh, just receiving the package from home wrapped in Christmas wrapping paper um, can definitely make a difference for them. So I think that's, that's another reason why it's important for us to come to work every day and do what we do here at the military post office. So there's a different feeling here in the mailroom during the holiday season and 
uh, whether it be gifts or personal merchandise, uh, the spirit of giving and the spirit of kindness you can, you can really feel through their packages and even during our customer interactions. So it is highly rewarding, especially during this time in December uh, when we receive gifts and merchandise from their loved ones back home and family members and, and friends that would help them boost morale. So we, we serve uh, Arsent, we serve Task Force Spartan, and we serve Arsent uh, subordinate units as well. It's a rewarding job, it's fast paced, it's difficult, and uh, it's highly satisfying at the same time. It's gonna be a busy month going forward. We've, we've averaged twice the packages this month. The reaction I see when I see soldiers being deployed for the first time getting the first package is, it's a great feeling. The, the sense of awe and the sense that you can feel that somebody cares about them. And being part of that process is a very satisfying experience for, for us in the mailroom. As we receive packages, not only during the holidays, but year round, let's not forget all those helping behind the scenes to make sure we get that little taste of home. Well, that will do it for this edition of The Desert Vision. As we move into the new year, we wish you all a happy 2021. For more photos, videos, and stories, check out our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash U.S. Army Central. For Task Force Spartan, I'm Staff Sergeant Daisy Broker. And for U.S. Army Central, I'm Sergeant Vontre Hansen. Patton's own. Always forward.